How to clean and rejet your carburetor, coming up next. What's up everybody, this is Monty with House to David MC, and today is part 13 of our GN250 build, where we're talking about how to clean and rejet the carburetor. Along with cleaning and rejetting, we're also gonna do a brief anatomy lesson and overview on how a carburetor actually works. So with all that being said, let's get to it. So typically when, when you see carburetor videos, they start with them assembled and they take them apart. But today we're gonna start disassembled and give a little anatomy lesson concerning the carburetor. So just a quick rundown, a quick overview of the carburetor. We've got the main carburetor body. This is the bowl of the carburetor. There's a handful of jets that help distribute fuel throughout the carburetor. And two of them I have out right here. This is the main jet in this carburetor. This is the idle jet. And there's another jet called the needle jet, which is in this center hole. And I'm not gonna remove it because it's not necessary to be removed. Uh, we'll clean it, but it's not necessary to be removed in this case. They call it a needle jet because on the other side, you see this diaphragm and down in the middle, there's actually a needle that goes through the jet and they call it a needle jet. Makes sense. One more thing about the needle. The needle also prevents or allows more air to flow into the carburetor. So this is the back of the motorcycle and this is towards the front air enters into the carburetor this way. And depending upon where the throttle is, is at, it allows more or less air to pass into the carburetor. And so there's a couple terms that you might hear and you may or may not understand them, uh, but lean or rich. Lean is when the air fuel mixture, there's more air than fuel and rich is when there's more fuel than air. So if you ever wondered, Finally, all motorcycle carburetors are gonna have what they call a float, and along with it, a float valve. So how does this all kind of come together and work? Well, the jets allow a certain amount of fuel to flow through them. And the, uh, the idle jet, as it's named, helps at idle. So when you're not working the throttle, when you're just sitting at a stoplight or whatever, this regulates the amount of fuel to keep the motorcycle at idle properly. The needle jet is where a majority of the magic happens. The needle is directly connected to the throttle. So as you turn the throttle, the throttle is attached to the needle and the needle moves up and down through the needle jet, allowing more or less fuel to pass into the carburetor. Finally, the main jet. On the top end of the throttle, this is where the main jet comes into play. It's the bigger of the jets. So the bowl holds the fuel and the float and the float valve helps keep the right amount of fuel in the carburetor at all times before it's burnt up. And so when there's no fuel in the bowl, the float sits down like this and it opens the valve. This guy opens the valve and allows fuel to fill into the bowl. As the fuel is filling into the bowl, the float begins to rise. And at a certain point when the fuel is at the right level in the bowl, then the float valve shuts off and no more fuels allowed into the bowl. Okay, so as we begin to put this thing back together, before you do that, you wanna make sure the carburetor is super clean. 99% of the problems 
that we have with our motorcycle not running properly or not being able to start has to do with this guy right here and has to do with these little guys right here. If uh, not so much in the main jets, we were gonna clean those out, but stuff like these idle jets, super small pin size holes in here. If they get clogged up, your motorcycle's not gonna run. So what we wanna do is get a carburetor cleaner and I'm not gonna do this right now. I don't wanna make a mess. But what you wanna do is essentially take some carburetor cleaner blow these out really good actually you can even let them soak a lot of times you can just take all the plastic parts off the carburetor itself and just let it soak overnight in carburetor cleaner uh, but once you've got it really cleaned you've got all these holes cleaned out with carburetor cleaner I like to go back with some compressed air and just blow out the holes Blow all the holes in here with compressed air once it's all totally uh, washed with carburetor cleaner. And then you're ready to put it back together. Bam. Sticker. Okay, so here's our new shiny jet. The original jet is a size 130, so we're gonna go up to start with a 132.5. I always like to make only one jet change at a time and try to work on it and make it run in that part of the throttle as well as it can and then make other changes once we feel like we've got that one just right then we move to like the idle jet or the needle jet or whatever we want to do. So this is where our main jet goes, we're just going to screw that in there. We're going to keep our original idle jet at this point, it goes right in here. gasket from Mike's XS. So we just install that gasket right there. Helps prevent any air or anything from sucking in these edges. Makes a real good seal. And now we can reinstall our float. And so you have a little tab right here on the float that the needle slides on. And then you install it to where the needle slides down that hole right there. And then you attach this little float pin like so. Another thing you want to do is make sure the point of your needle is, uh, how do you describe it? I don't know, symmetrical. Do some Googling, you'll see some good examples of worn out needles. Once you get your float installed, you wanna actually measure the height of your float. And this is just to make sure that you're getting the right amount of fuel into your bowl at all times. And so you can see as I'm turning this, the carburetor body, you can see that float's kind of moving. And so what we wanna do is get it right to where the float needle is closed. At that point, because the reality is we could go and press down on this some more and we don't want to do that. So we want to get it to right where the float needle is closed and then we want to make a measurement and I'm using my caliper here. The service manual says 27.4 plus or minus one is where we want it. So you measure it from the very base of the carburetor body right there, not on the lip, but right at the base and you just kind of get an idea of where it's at. So to me that looks okay. If you needed to adjust it, you would disassemble the float again and this little tab where the float needle attaches, you can bend that up or down to try to get that adjustment, that plus or minus uh, one millimeter. So that's how you adjust it. Now that that's all in place, we can install our bowl. So once we got our bowl attached, now we're going to reinstall our needle. And there's this little tab right here that aligns up with this little cutout. Our spring. And the lid. Make sure that uh, you get this diaphragm kind of seated in this 
in the chassis body right here. And once you get that in place, then just screw it in. Okay, once we have our carburetor reassembled, the last thing we'll do is add our pod filter. I like K&N. Uh, this particular pod filter is nice because it doesn't get in the way of some of these air passageways that lead to some of our jets. Some of, the, some of these air filters, if you're not careful, the rubber on the inside of these things will close up the air filter passageways and it'll jack up your whole carburetor flow. So you wanna make sure you get one that when you install it, it's not covering up these jets. Otherwise you get it and you'll have to like drill out some holes to make sure it flows properly. This one works super nice with this carburetor. And so um, you just stick it on there, clamp it down and you're ready to go. Don't forget to oil up your air filter. And finally, install the carburetor. So there she is, carburetor installed. So if you enjoy the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel down below. Like the videos, make comments, share them with your friends. As always, this has been Monty with House of David, taking one motor, one revelation at a time.